So, in April of last year, Ninja Kiwi released a blog post that revealed the most and least used towers in BTD6. And while the top of the list makes a lot of sense, the bottom of the list just doesn't. You're telling me that the least used monkeys in this game are Monkey Ace, Engineer, and Mortar? These are some of my favorite towers in the game, and seeing them so low here makes me wonder why people aren't using them. So today I'm going to bring it upon myself to explain how to use these towers and why you should use them, starting with the biggest one. Now of course a tier 5 isn't viable if it's tier 3 and tier 4 aren't good, so let's first discuss Shellshock. Shellshock is an upgrade that gives Mortar a second wave of damage upon impact that stuns balloons that are within the explosion radius and as well does an extra bit of damage. And then the fourth tier upgrade, the big one, as you can probably tell makes it bigger. Pun intended. And in particular, the damage goes from 2 to 7, the blast radius is doubled, and as well the pierce is roughly doubled. So in short, this thing pretty much dominates the mid game, and especially ceramics. So if you're kinda like me and really hate ceramics, this tower is going to make you very happy. And now we arrive at the biggest one. He got 99 problems and the biggest one- The biggest one is a little bit of a monster. The biggest one does 25 damage shot, and specially does 45 damage to ceramics and moabs. The radius is increased by a further 25%, and the pierce is now a whopping 200. The biggest one, in my opinion at least, is pretty much the best way to deal with any ceramic, as you can tell by the stats here. In general, it's a pretty sure way to kill anything underneath a zoom, G. It is worth noting though that DDTs are a bit of a struggle for this guy because he can only really attack so fast. And unfortunately, this leads to DDTs outpacing the mortar pretty quickly. Now, that does it for the biggest one. Next up, pop and all. Starting with Heavy Shells. Heavy Shells gives the mortar the ability to pop black balloons, surprisingly. And as well, it does extra damage to fortified lead, ceramics, and moabs. And a little teaser to future upgrades, plus two damage to stun balloons. And then, moving on to the fourth tier upgrade, Artillery Battery. The mortar now shoots four times as fast and as well triples the barrels. As well as the increased attack speed and barrel usage, it also doubles the previous damage buffs and as well gains an ability. This ability gives the mortar extra blast radius and as well quadruples the attack even more. And of course we have the tier 5, the pop and all. The pop and all is first and foremost an ability that stuns everything on screen for 8 seconds. And during these 8 seconds, not only are all balloons and mill-ups stunned, excluding bads of course, also there is a constant bombardment of 20 damage for everything on screen. And aside from the ability, Heavy Shells is also upgraded to 12 damage on ceramics, 4 against leads, 4 against fortified, 4 against mill-ups, and 10 to stun balloons. And yes, this does technically mean it does in fact synergize with itself, I guess. Not gonna lie, the damage of, of this guy in particular isn't really that impressive. The stun ability is pretty good, I suppose, in the late game, although the damage for this guy kind of falls off past the mid game and especially is not really that great against DDTs. And now we enter the third and final mortar upgrade, the Bloon Cineration. Starting with, of course, the Signal Flare upgrade. Signal Flare is pretty basic. It just decamos anything that it hits and as well does a little bit of fire damage. And to be honest, it's not even really that good of a decamo because it's pretty inaccurate. However, more impressively, there are Shattering Shells, the upgrade that you're probably gunning for when you get this tower. It is an ability. Well, not really an ability as much as it's something that the mortar does. It takes away fortified and regrow properties alongside the pre-established decamo. And if you're getting this, you're probably getting this because this defortifies moabs, with the exceptions of DDTs, bads, and zoom G's, of course. And then last but not quite least, the blue incineration. In addition to its normal attack, the uh, Blue Incineration now drops a wall of fire that does 100 damage per tick, which is to say it does about 500 damage for every tick of afterburn it accumulates. Which is a pretty dramatic upgrade from going to a tower that doesn't really do that much damage but has great utility to a tower that does pretty much the most damage out of the three mortars. Like for real, this thing goes from kind of dangerous to outright, outright destructive. destructive, one of the strongest towers in the game to be quite honest. I mean, I'm genuinely kind of taken aback by this guy because when I was recording the background footage, I wasn't expecting it, but I defeated almost every round in the game nearly exclusively with Balloon Cineration. And with that said, you may now be wondering, well, Taiga, how do I use these Mortar Monkeys? Well, to that I say, let's find out. 
Now, admittedly, mortar strategy is pretty basic. Starting with the biggest one, you're pretty much going to be using this guy for leaks and ceramics, not really much else, unless you want to use it for a mild bit of mob damage. Personally, when I use the biggest one, I prefer to pair it up with a mob damaging tower like Archmage, Mad, or something of the sort. But it's worth noting that the biggest one suffers from the common mortar issue of not really being able to do much on short maps, for example, Workshop. The reasons for this is, for one, it requires a bit of micro, especially the middle path. And also, well, to be honest, most of the mortars don't really kill that fast. Aside from the blatant example that is the blue incineration, most mortars aren't very fast killers. And this is exemplified with our next mortar, the pop at all. To be honest, there isn't really much strategy to be had with pop and all. He synergizes with himself, and he has a pretty obvious way to use him. You use him things that can stun like Striker Jones and Bloom Impact. Although I have to say, for pop and all, this guy doesn't really have that many uses other than, I guess, just because you want to use him. But, I, I will admit, this guy, there is a reason why he's not really used all that much. It doesn't help that without his ability, he practically does tier 4 levels of damage. And Blue Incineration is pretty much as simple as it gets. Of course, the tier 3 and tier 4 are all support, and may I say, probably some of the best support in the game. Getting rid of the fortification will be a pretty clutch move, especially on rounds 98 and 99. As for the tier 5 though, I'll be honest, this guy is good on pretty much any map. His wall of fire is kind of insane. And in general, you're looking at probably one of the best DPS towers you can get for such a price. And of course the synergies with this guy are, I mean, as basic as it gets. Just any other tower that can clean it up, say, well, Perma Spike, Bloom Solver, Grandmaster Ninja, I guess. It, it's really quite open-ended. And of course all three mortars are pretty good with the Striker Jones, but you probably already knew that. And with that said, that is the Mortar Monkey. And personally, I think you should use this tower a lot more often. I mean, at the very least, give it a try. I know the micro is kind of daunting, and as well, in general, it's not really the most viable tower for harder maps, but it makes a lot of easier maps a lot easier because the longer track lengths makes it so that a tower like the biggest one or pop and all can definitely do some damage. Or, as shown in the footage, you can pretty much end the game with something like Blue Incineration. And in the end, I hope you learned something, or at the very least, enjoyed the video. And if you enjoyed the video, there's some buttons that you can press, uh, I can't really think of their names right now, but like, they're somewhere on the screen, you can press them, and it's really cool. Or, you can tell me how much you liked it in the Discord server, or my Twitter account, I guess. And, with that said, shall bid you all farewell. Thank you.